What is up? What is up? Yo, I am Jonathan Crane. I'm a mediocre cat too out of Birmingham, Alabama, and I am watching the Momentum Indy race. This is the second to last race of the American Crit Cup season this year. Whoa, looks like we already got some people watching. What's up, everybody? Hey, somebody say something in the chat. Make sure I've uh, got everything hooked up right. So I normally sit in a chair right here. I'm going to spin while we watch this. Rugio, I was setting everything up, so I saw, looked like Skylar Schneider crashed. Am I right there? Looked like she slid out, which is rough. Um, a lot of people crashed into her. So what was the outcome after that? I've, I've got like 10 windows on multiple screens here. So I was catching bits and pieces. Um, Kendall and Skylar hit the barrier. Eesh, yikes. So who who ended up? getting through there clean and winning. Um, some of you are probably noticing I'm normally not spinning when I do this. Uh, I always do this in the setup where my Zwift setup is. That's why I have a green screen here. That's this whole thing. Um, today, I have not had a chance to get a, get a ride in, so I am doing an easy trainer road workout in the background while I watch this, and that... Uh, is going to allow me to get ride in and keep me from having to redo this entire room twice. Muno's one. Okay, that makes sense. I think I saw her getting uh getting interviewed. So, let's take a look at the start list here. We got a lot of uh a lot of familiar names to me. So, if you're wondering why I particularly am doing this, I'm a cat too, so I race with some of these guys, you know, on and off here and there. Um, so I'm looking at this list and I see Preston Beasley, a guy I raced with a couple of weeks ago in Nashville. Seeing a lot of names I recognize. Um, looks like Legion has Boardman, so that's a strong one. Uh, Mickley, also someone I raced with recently. Mickley Bowes for Nashville. I think I'll race with a lot of their roster. Ethan Crane got a big uh, no relation. He's got an E on the end of his name. He's from New Zealand. He got a uh, really big result at um, at Intelligentsia, I believe. Or no, second day of Salt Lake. Second day of Salt Lake. After the day after the uh, the big fight. We got Johnny Brown here, former national road champion. Um... Drew Dillman, I have raced a little bit of gravel with that dude. He's an absolute monster. Uh, this is a good course for a cyclocrosser. This course is basically a triangle. So two of the corners are more than 90 degrees. So very, very, very sharp corners, sharper than normal. You don't normally get any more than uh, 90 degrees. Looks like they're calling up Corey right here. Corey's brother, Justin, has just gotten a ban for the rest of the season for the fight that he had with, uh, why am I blanking right now? Best Buddies rider Hernandez at, um, at the Salt Lake City race, race number one at Salt Lake City. They got into it after the race, and yeah, he got a ban for that. So I think... Legion is going to have something to prove today, maybe more than usual. Um, because of that, Brandon Fury here. Uh, I listened to podcasts with Brandon. He was on the um, Criterium Nation podcast last week. Um, really interesting. I didn't realize he has a full time job. That's a question I get a lot on these streams. Is like, do these guys work or what? Oh, here's Clever Martinez. I see he's got the camera on his helmet. I've actually got another window open with his Facebook page. If he goes live, I might try to pull his live stream, like put another window in here and go picture in picture. So if he goes live and I don't realize it, you guys tell me. And uh, 
I'll go searching for it and we can go picture in picture. That's something I've been thinking about doing for a long time. And uh, seems like Clever has kind of cracked the live streaming thing this year. Wow, Ben, yeah. There was one year at, um, talking about Dillman, there was one year at, uh, oh, Alfredo Rodriguez broke his collarbone. Looks like he's back. Um, I think this is maybe his first big one back. But yeah, going back to the Dillman discussion, there was one year at um, Southern Cross Gravel Race, probably 2017 or 2018. Dillman was like 10th and I was 11th or like 11th and 12th. But all day I could just see his his helmet. He had a, I think he was racing for Milligan, whatever his collegiate team was, had uh, orange helmets. And I could just see his orange helmet like over every rise. Never got close to him. That was uh, the season after he won collegiate cyclocross national champion. Let's see who else we got. Marion. Yeah. Marion has orange, right? Like black and orange. Can't I'm just making that up. Um, let's see who else we got here on the list. Dillman, uh, Oliver Flout. I, Butcher Box hasn't had a real result this year, so I think Oliver Flout might be looking to go for a breakaway. Um, let's see. I raced with Guten Plan in um, Birmingham, dude out of Florida, not too long ago, beginning of the season. Uh, Caleb Landgreave done a bunch of racing with him this year he's a kid out of georgia who is super strong super uh underrated unknown kid way stronger than anybody knows clever martinez um he's gonna be looking for a win he has not had a win at one of these acc races he won the overall at uh was it intelligentsia or one of those big series he won a big overall. Uh, JP Prim raced with him in Nashville a couple weeks ago. He got in a really, really long breakaway that went. Um, Hugo Scala is going to be working for Brandon Fury, the leader, for sure. Scala is normally the one who shepherds uh, Brandon Fury to the end. Tell me about Purvis. I don't know Purvis. I'm really just listing like Southeast guys because I've raced with them. Frank Travieso, Frank the Tank, uh, out of Athens. Corey Williams and Tyler Williams for Legion. Oh, we're underway. All right, let's get this out of the way. Here we go. Interesting. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me about uh, Brock Mason. He's... He's had, like, the biggest breakout season of the year, I would, I would think. He got in a lot of big breakaways, a lot of top fives, top tens at Speed Week. There's Mickley Bowles with the camera on his head. Hey, somebody tell me if you see uh, Clever Martinez going live, speaking of cameras on heads. Haven't seen it yet. I'm looking at his Facebook page, but maybe I should, uh, maybe I should refresh. Just see if he's gone live. Maybe he's going to film it and hold on to his footage. Purvis is a break guy. Look for him to get up the road. All right, what team is Purvis on? I guess I can look here. I still got this window open. Purvis. First Internet Bank. Okay. Corey going straight to the front today. So this race is a right triangle, basically. So we got one 90-degree corner and then two... What would that make the rest? What are the other corners of a, of a right triangle? How many degrees? More than 90, but less than 180. Halfway between there. So I think going to the front makes sense. Mack Racing rider going straight to that. I think he's confused. Dude from Mack Racing is like, I'm on the front? Like, no one's fighting me for this? Seems like we got a little bit of, uh, I don't know if fatigue is the right word, but a little bit of like, the field has been thinned out a little bit, a little bit of attrition in the the general like American peloton this year, and not as many guys pre-regged. I'm really noticing I have not seen uh, 
I've not seen Gibbons. I've not seen Gibbons, and I have not seen anyone else from that team. Is that Purvis right there, First Internet Bank? That looks like maybe uh, Frank Travieso of Miami Blazers taking a rip there. Although it's been established on this channel, there are Frank has at least one doppelganger on the team that I always confuse him for. They have similar beards, similar skin tone, similar build, and similarly like to go on these long breakaways. So, and they're dressed exactly the same. I need one of them to put a camera on their head or something so that I can tell them apart. Good call, Austin. You said he would be trying to get up the road, and he is literally the first guy trying to get up the road. I guess somebody to watch there for sure. Not seeing Legion just like massing at the front. I'm not sure they even fielded a full team. I think I only saw five of them. I did not see Magner for Legion. He's not here unless he registered day of. Again, like the list I'm looking at is who pre-regged. They don't feed me the official start list, although feel free to. I would love to have that. But I'm looking at who pre-regged, so there's always a chance somebody did day of, but most of those big teams don't fool with that. So looks like we got zero, zero automatic. I know they've had a lot of crashes, a lot of bad luck, um, but broken bike in the broken bike took Tom out of the overall. He had to take like five laps. Oh, okay, nice. Cool, Duncan. I thought they were racing because I was seeing uh, Dawson's been on this channel. He and I did a um, crit season preview way back where we just uh, kind of podcast style chopped it up about this season for a while. But you know, I follow all his social media and stuff, so it seemed like he was ramping up. I think this is Dillman. I think that's Dillman taking a flyer. Might have been Cade Bickmore. I don't know. Dillman normally has the long hair. Dillman won um, Snake Alley Crit, which, if you know American Crit Racing, it's a little bit of a deep cut. But Snake Alley goes up a cobbled, not cobbled, like brick switchback climb that's like 10 to 20%, and you just do that lap after lap. Snake Alley is an absolutely insane race. So, definitely on one. It's like a prestige, it's like a deep cut race. Yeah, nobody's going with him, but also no one's really massing on the front and taking it over. Best Buddies and Legion, I think, are both going to have something to prove today. They both got a rider suspended after that big fight. I think they're going to be looking to say, hey, we're still here, we're still racing, we're not giving up, but... Everyone is kind of looking around a little bit. Don't love the look of the new Legion helmets. Looks looks on the camera. Like, I'm sure really close up, it looks cool. But it's like those, uh, the Yumbo Visma kits that had that, like, weird brown. Not the ones they're wearing in the Vuelta, the ones they wore in the Tour. They had some kind of texture on them that I'm sure close up looked really cool. But on the camera, it just looked like a weird, like, muddy brown. Okay, Cade Bickmore. So I guess Texas Roadhouse has multiple long hairs on the team. Unless, uh, unless Dillman cut his hair, which is always a possibility. I cut my hair, so I guess you can do that. I also thought it was Dillman because of the, uh, the camera on the front, too, though. He's got the camera under the stem. Dillman normally runs a camera under the stand. Dillman has a really good video from um, Snake Alley. If you want to check out some, some crit videos on YouTube. Looks like Legion's got one, two, three. I was seeing like three in the top ten for Legion. But they are not just massing on the front and taking it over like they have done in the past. We'll see if maybe they pick a point in the race to start doing that. Looks like they are chasing it down, though. They're not just going to let it go. This might be the move for Texas Roadhouse, though. They haven't had a big result this year. Maybe they sense a little bit of a lack of control from a major team, 
and they're just going to start firing Cade Bickmore. He comes back. Arthur Fergus, he comes back. Drew Dillman, he comes back. And eventually one of those gets some daylight or gets the right combo of guys or Legion starts covering them rather than uh, pulling them back. That's when you know the race has changed. When Legion is sending guys into the break rather than bringing the break back themselves, that's when uh, Legion has lost control a tiny bit. <laughs> oh yeah uh we had these kind of barriers at athens twilight like last time i did it whatever that was 21 maybe and uh in my video from that there are multiple times you can hear me running over the legs and i'm setting up a turn because those flat legs come out so far and when you run over the leg the barrier kind of comes at you so you hear here on my video like Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, and you can see the barrier. You got to be careful that those uh, advertisements on the banner are cinched down really well. You get a gust of wind, and one of those comes over right into your bars. That can uh, that can flip you real good. Seen that happen more than once. I actually think that happened at Sunny King last year, like first or second lap in my race. Yeah, I think you're right, Ben. They're uh this is this is as close to a home crowd as it gets, so they're gonna be going all out. Seen a lot of best buddies. It looks like they're kind of massing at the front more more than they normally do. Not that they're riding way back, but is that a... Uh, I don't think that's Ethan Crane on the front for Project Echelon. So here's the dynamic here. Project Echelon, red jersey in the middle there. They've got the red leaders jersey. There's kind of some pressure on them. Fury is in the overall lead, has not won an indi has not won an individual race. He's just been super consistent over the whole season. So not sure if he's going to be itching to get a win or what he's going to be feeling there. Looks like oh crash, Project Echelon rider, DDP Peter. Um. Oh, another rider I didn't mention, I don't think that's him, but uh, Best Buddies has Curtis White in the mix, um, one of the top five best cyclocross racers in the country for sure. Yeah, you can really see when they pan across that how tight that corner is. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a hell of a corner. Looks like Best Buddies is sensing a little bit of, uh, looks like that Sam Boardman may be going in the move. This could be really interesting. Yeah, that is Sam Boardman from Legion with the mustache there. Some kind of crazy armband going on. I appreciate the mustache and the armband. That makes it way easier for me to ID a rider. I wish everybody would choose like one, one weird specific piece of flair that's not just their regular team kit. Ooh, that is a that's a corner. It makes sense that it would be harder to control with a couple of these corners like that one that you absolutely have to stop pedaling for a second. Looks like all the echelon riders are gonna get back in. None of them are uh you know crashed and done. Ooh, strung out. Looks like we're already losing about half the Peloton. If you weren't in the top 20 or 30, your day might be over. Um so it looks like I saw a lot of the Nashville local riders chasing back on back there. Hopefully those guys get there. I know Preston hasn't had a, a lot of chances to make these big national races this year, so I'd love to see him in there. Uh, JP Prim is really good. The exit is very narrow. Interesting. What Do you know what nor number corner that is that narrows down? At the exit, I looked at a aerial map, but you kind of can't always tell from those. First sprint there, Alfredo Rodriguez, Clever Martinez, Brandon Fury. Kind of surprised to see a lot of guys going. Let's see where we're at on the points competition. I got that pulled up too. Um, Here we go. 
here are the points. So in the overall, we got Fury in front with 498, almost unassailable. Clever Martinez in second with 373. Alfredo Rodriguez in third with 296. And those mid mid race preem points do count toward that overall, as well as finish points. But then you got the sprint competition here, and in the sprint competition, the finish points don't count. It's only the mid race points preems. Fury is winning 150 with Ethan Crane, also from Echelon, on 65. So maybe Hernandez is trying to jump Crane here. I don't know. I'm I'm surprised to see people really uh really going for those because it seems like Fury mathematically has those kind of locked up. Maybe I okay. I guess there is one other reason I can think of, and that's down here. Um team competition best buddies is on 969 echelon is on 960 so maybe uh best buddies might be trying to hold on to the team overall there since they had a uh a broken collarbone and a suspension kind of take take the individual overall away from them they might be going for that that would make sense if three is the hard corner Lance, because uh, that is the one where the, the big slide out happened in the women's race on the last lap. I'm pretty sure. That makes the entrance to the sprint pretty gnarly. I think that's uh, Oliver Flout second for Butcher Box. Mentioned him earlier. I think, let's see who else Butcher Box has. I wasn't looking specifically for them. Maybe if they got Movenzada, that could be a good pick for today. At least to be an animator. Yeah, Spencer Movenzada is here for Butcher Box. I'll know him when I see him, though. He's uh, pretty distinctive on the bike. Smaller dude. Not sure what that purple jersey was up front. Or, like, dark blue or bluish purple. Second wheel there. Not sure who that is. Maybe a local guy. There's some. There's at least one, like fully local team in here. This is Aaron Bleakley, Beakley for Texas Roadhouse. Woo. Wow. Oh man. Oh, okay, Ethan Crane is in the green jersey since Fury's in the red, so that makes them easy. Yep. You're right, Lance. This is a uh, the whole sprint happens here on the back stretch. That's um the race I was talking about that I did in Nashville with a bunch of these guys, which Corey Lockwood was there, which is weird. He used to be on Legion. He's on Butcher Box now. Don't know why he was in Nashville for a weeknight race, but he was. Um, but that race in Nashville, there's a chicane into the pit row. There's a chicane... Final turn is a chicane, basically, and then it's only like 75 to 100 meters to the line. So the entire sprint is basically to get into that chicane. You can maybe take one spot from the chicane to the finish, but that's kind of it. Interesting. Once again, we got Legion covering the move rather than bringing it back. The question is, does the Legion rider get in there and work? Or does the Legion rider get in there and just sit in? the entire rest of the race. Echelon's not having that, though. Echelon looks like they're going to... They recognize that they're going to take up the mantle and do the work. They know that uh, Legion... They can't just rely on Legion to bring everything back today like they have throughout the rest of the season. Huh. Interesting, Dunk. For some reason, I thought Lockwood was a... Uh, California guy. Maybe he was at one point, but he's not now. I don't know. I was warming up and I saw somebody. Uh, Saley is in this race. Saw Saley on the list for uh, Blazers. I gotta believe that like Saley and maybe Travieso might go for some breakaways. Other than that, I think they'll be all in for a sprint 
for Martinez. But Staley is a good pick for a, a guy who might get aggressive, who coming off an injury but seems to have good form now and uh, likes to race aggressive, likes to race off the front. He might get up there. <laughs> yeah, the beard that's the same color as your chin. So it kind of just looks like a low-resolution face or something. Huh. Surprised to see Echelon sending someone up the road rather than covering stuff. Although maybe they're kind of doing doing the math and realizing it'll be easier to uh, keep Fury where they need him. None of those four guys are mathematically challenging him in the overall, so probably if Clever gets across, then the uh, Project Echelon rider in the break would stop pulling just on, on principle. Yeah, Connor... Uh, Ooh, okay. I think that's uh Is that Mickley? Oh man. I hate to see that. That looks like a broken leg, maybe. Oh man, Mickley. He's got a really good channel as well. Uh he put up a raw GoPro video from Pro Crit Nats. Yeah, me too, Matt. My crit season is over. I uh had a week off the bike. Now I'm building toward cyclocross, which starts in less than a month now. So I'm on the uh, expressed train to cyclocross at this point. Wish I could have gotten a couple more crits in. That last, the Nashville one is going to be the last one for me this year. Looks like it's getting a little ragged up front. Seeing Corey Williams back there, kind of realizing there's a gap, maybe trying to go across. Whoa, big split, really big split, and nobody behind wants it. They're they're bobbing and weaving, looking at each other. Getting interesting. So who's up there? Clever's up there. Boardman's up there. Maybe Tyler Williams from Legion. Echelon's got two. Uh, Butcher Box has got one. That might be Dillman for uh, for Roadhouse, too. Weird split there. It looked like someone in the field, the thing where, like, it's just been going hard for a while. All it takes when it's lined up single file is one guy in the field to just be like, I'm done, I can't hold this anymore. Gap goes out. You normally don't see it in these races. Yeah, I saw that, Matt. It looked like... I, I clocked Corey because he was, like, standing up and trying to get across a gap. And then he swung off and shook his head, and nobody would come through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody wants someone else to get uh, scared by the chainsaw guy or whatever. I don't know who missed this that would send someone across. There's Corey again. He wants to be across. I'm not sure why Best Buddies is chasing. They got two in. Legion's got two in. I would think Roadhouse would be happy with one. That is not Dillman from Roadhouse. That guy's too tall and too clean shaven. Yeah, Hugo Scala Jr. attacking from this would be good. You probably have to split this big move and get a move where everyone is fully committed and rotating even even turns this is going to be a hard course to rotate on with these corners too Ooh, butcher box rider pulling he just tapped sam rosenholtz he tapped his chest i wonder if he's got some like arrhythmia going on or something <laughs> i wonder if there's a dinner roll uh like an amount on their contract or if it's free Free for the duration, free for life. I don't know if I've seen the Texas Roadhouse in the last like ten years. I would eat. I would eat a baked potato though. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know who's gonna chase that. I guess First Internet Bank fully missed it, but do they have the firepower? The thing is, will these guys just start rotating though? Are these guys gonna commit, go hard, 
someone's going to have to attack from this group. There's one guy that I don't recognize there in the black kit. If anybody can ID that guy, taking a pull right now. Don't recognize him. Looks like that might be a... Uh... Ooh, they got three in there for best buddies. So three best buddies, two Legion, two Echelon, two Blazers, two Stragglers, two, two one-offs. Yep. That's like, I mean, just with Boardman, you got like half the motors in the group there. Hey, y'all check. Is, uh, is Clever live? I'm going to Clever's, U or Clever's uh, Facebook. He normally goes live on Facebook, right? Somebody check Clever's socials. If he's live, I'm going to pull that stream into this stream. And we'll get a picture in picture going. Or if any of these guys are live, but I think Clever Clever's the only one that I see doing it regularly. I see the camera on his head. I'm not seeing the little flashing red light though. It would be insane if he was running a camera and just like he just had a sail up there and wasn't doing anything with it. Yeah, that would be awesome. This would be a very different race. I mean, this it makes sense this course would be one where a group could get away, although I would think it would need to be a smaller group than this. This is looking a lot like what happened, I guess, the last couple of times at Athens. At Athens, it happens not because the corners are so technical, but because of the hill. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, Duncan. Yeah, I didn't know that. I was warming up for that race and uh, saw somebody in a butcher box kit with the look bike and the Princeton Carbon Works wheels. And I pointed it out to my teammate, uh, Zach. I was like, hey, watch that dude. I don't, don't recognize him. I didn't get a good look at the face. I just saw the kid and bike go by. Uh, it's like, watch that dude. And then we're on the line and they called out you know, going down the checklist, they called out Corey Lockwood and I like nudged Zach again. And I was like, watch that dude. I've actually got a breakdown of that race. That is, uh, I've recorded it. I just got to edit it down, but I guess look for that on my channel. Okay. Is he on that, uh, John Kroom style van life thing? That seems like a really hard way to be a bike racer with uh, sleep being so important to your recovery and everything. Maybe I just haven't slept in an expensive enough van, but I've done a lot of music touring and slept in a lot of very bad vans. 12 seconds. Thanks for the update, Matt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 in this move. It looks like it's going out. I just don't, I can't wrap my mind around who would be chasing behind that would have the firepower. <laughs> you got to be rich to have a van that is livable. I'm sure you've all seen that meme about, uh, you could be living in a van down by the river. That used to be like, used to be a, a Saturday Night Live punchline, and now it's like a goal. I do wish I still had my van. I used to have a pretty sick conversion van. <laughs> the Strickland Curse. Yeah, I know a few other mountain bikers. Uh, Jerry Dufour is a guy from here. He's the uh, RV life. Former, I think he was U23 XC national champion. Races for... um. Dirt Camp Pro Cycling. For real though, if you're doing van life, how do you have, have good enough internet to watch this? Do you just have like unlimited phone data? All right, they're not, they're not organized enough. Someone's got to attack from this group and half it. I was saying earlier, this was too big of a move. It's too many guys for them to be working smoothly especially on a course this technical, it's kind of tough to uh, 
take smooth turns. Looks like Boardman, though, is committing. Got a clever Martinez interview. I guess I'll, uh, I'll let them talk. You guys want to hear clever? Uh, honoring the great Major Taylor, so you definitely have opened your legs up. You're in second place in the point series here. What's the nice. game plan? The game plan is to keep it fast today. There's not a lot of uh, opportunities like today where uh, Legion shows up, not with the That is very splash, bolder setup. So, uh, it's going to be pretty hard for them to keep it together. So, yeah, we're going to blast it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of the other he teams will have the same game plan. As, Legion's as not keeping it together. Is, Legion is understaffed. Let's just lay the wood and give them all that we have. And I think this course is going to prove to be tough for a lot of people, not just Legion, but other teams as well. It'll be. It'll be. It, it looks like it's a really fast course. And uh, that, those turns, even, you know, it, there's just three of them, but they're pretty tight. So, uh, yeah, it's it's skills and legs at the same time. Perfect way to end it. Skills and legs. Good luck tonight. <laughs> He called it. Legion could not control the way they normally do. Have we got a split from the breakaway? No, breakaway is still 10 deep. Looks like the group behind is uh, a little closer. Still within the like 10 second realm. All right, I'm going to count it. 42 when the back went across there. Let's see when we see him coming around this corner. There's 52. That's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, still not seeing anybody. All right, maybe it's going up, 15, 20 seconds. Shot's not staying static long enough, but it's at least 15 seconds by my count. Who is that other than Martinez in the break for Blazers? That might be Johnny, that's Johnny Brown right here. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Lance. It's an interesting, so my favorite races to do tend to be the kind that Legion does not do well at. Love Athens Twilight, love a race that's more than four corners. And I do worry that if, if Legion does kind of like take over the entire American scene, create, an, create their own league that's kind of invite only, like the uh, Into the Lion's Den model that all of the races will be, you know, NASCAR tracks, five lane wide, four corner crit, pedal the whole time. Yeah, Boardman is awesome. Uh, that win at the time trial, what was that uphill time trial he won? It was at like... Gila or Valley of the Sun, one of the big one of the big uh, stage races. He's also driving this. I think he sees this is maybe his day. He doesn't have a leader he's working for. Maybe not his day to win, but he normally doesn't get this opportunity to be in the break. So he's doing the work. He's driving it. Looks like the other Legion rider may just be sitting on. Maybe not. Uh, it's maybe Tyler Williams, just like not pulling turns. Be interesting to see if, oh, best buddies attack from the break. Got to do it. I think there's a preem. Wow. Curtis White, cyclocrosser, going for the preem. Is he going to get nipped? No, he got it. <laughs> Little tip of the cap there on the line. That's true, Lance, but most races, when brakes are going, he's the one pulling them back, not the one in them. So he just doesn't get many chances because of what Legion's strategy normally is. He doesn't get many chances to be in the break. He gets, he's much more often the uh, L, L track door, Thomas de Gimp mode, or sorry, Tim de Clerk mode. De Gint is the one being chased down normally. <laughs> Man, that was a big pop from uh, Curtis White there, letting it rip a little. 
yeah, Armed Forces is a perfect example. Any of the races they, like, lose control of seems like really hot ones. Legion has a tendency to kind of lose control a little. I think, like, the second day of Salt Lake last year was one that got away from them a little bit. Man, I'm puckering every time that corner. I know they're running over those barrier feet. That's what I was talking about a minute ago, where you hear that to tink to tink to tink Oh, nice, Lance. Cool. I've always wanted to do uh, that cyclocross race in D.C., DCCX, on the uh, Armed Forces Retirement Community Grounds. Seems like a cool event. But there's so much cyclocross in the southeast, I can't even do it all. We got, like, five or six races in Alabama, like, ten in Georgia. Tennessee's got some, too. So just just day drives, there's, like, more than I can actually race, which is awesome. But it includes me from uh, – it would feel stupid to drive past, like, three races to get to another race, especially when – I'm a two, so at DCCX, I'm going to get just absolutely destroyed in the Pro 1-2 race. I'm uh, locally fast and nationally slow. Looks like Martinez and Brown, that is Johnny Brown, I'm pretty sure. Second wheel for Blazers right there. Former U.S. national champion on the road. Used to ride for Action Hoggis Berman. Um, Eddie Merckx's... Son Axel's team. That looks like JP Prim getting cold, maybe. Sorry, JP. <laughs> See, I need it to be opposite though. I need the I need the hard race to be closer to me. Because I'll get pulled quick in that. And then I can drive to the crappy local race and finish the whole thing. Strongest geezers, I like that. Yeah, I always say I'm fastest of the slow or slowest of the fast. It's kind of whichever way you uh, you slice it. Like most of the guys I was mentioning that uh, I've raced with this year and in general a decent bit are the guys that are in this race but not on our screen right now. There's like a little bit of a, a different level here that we're seeing. This is a different type of race. I'm going to be really interested to see at what point does this break down. So we're almost exactly halfway right now. This is a 70-minute race. We're at 35 exactly. So can a break this big just continue pulling turns like this? Or at some point, do they... Uh, does each team, I would think best buddies would already be doing this, just have one of your riders, one of your three if your best buddies, sit on the back of this move and not take any pulls. It looks like Legion has not been committing uh, Tyler, I think that's Tyler Williams, in the back, third to the back there, Legion kit. I don't think I've seen him take a pull, although Boardman has probably taken the pulls of two men. Matt, if you started race, if you started watching them last year, you have not seen one unless you watched uh, Athens Twilight. <laughs> I respect the wide bars, but I can no longer uh, can no longer do the wide bars. Actually, I've got forty fours on my cross bike, but no one cares what you got on your cross bike. This is my old road bike, and I feel like I'm driving a semi-truck. Yep, I think this is the one, Austin. I think you're right. Looks like Ethan Crane. All right, we're going back to the Peloton here. Ethan Crane on the front. Looks like Project Echelon is uh, putting it down on the front. Fury is sitting, like, mid-pack back there. I wonder if they, like, don't want to let that many... Ooh, ooh! Tripod, full cyclocross tripod foot dab from one of the uh, echelon riders there, saved it. That was, uh, that was wild.
Not sure what it's saying the sprint leaders over there. That's not the overall. Maybe that's just for this race. Is there a stream for Armed Forces? I couldn't find uh, anywhere to actually watch Armed Forces on the internet. So it makes it hard to check out when you can't actually see the race. But yeah, that race is long enough that it gets ripped apart. Uh, Brandon, no, Brandon is uh, in the red jersey. Brandon Fury. He's in the solid red, like halfway back. Someone else uh, from Echelon in the American flag gloves. So Ethan Crane is in the green jersey for the sprint leader, third wheel there. He's also actually Echelon, but he's got a, a series jersey. It is crazy that DC is that hot. It's like Curtis White's getting some uh, some nutrition down. In that corner, the crazy corner. If anyone can take that corner, though, it's going to be him. Nice try, James. Nice try. Can't fool me. At least not with that one. <laughs> Vogel is a doctor. Is is that Vogel? Maybe that's Vogel. Vogel was the one who, uh, speaking of Armed Forces Classic... Vogel won that. I guess that was that was like the first one back after COVID. I can't remember if that actually happened in 2020 at the end of the year or if that was the beginning of 2021. But yeah, first one back. Vogel Vogel took it, and that was like the only race, one of the only ones that year where Agent had the full hit squad there, and somebody just took him to task. Man, Boardman trucking right here that's a big guy who's making himself so narrow and just yeah i'm not sure austin i think maybe echelon just has like two distinct games going on here they said everyone who's in the break do whatever you want win from the break if you can everyone who's on in the field Race this like you guys are Legion controlling it because we're we're the ones with the impetus on us. We got to protect uh, protect Fury. But yeah, it doesn't seem like a completely holistic strategy for them to be pulling turns in the break and also trying to pull the break back. Yeah, weird weird strategy, but all right. Um. Maybe I, they're toward the back right now. Maybe they just got the, uh, maybe they just got the call, or they um, got the word from the director on the side. Woo, Martinez ripped that turn. Yeah, clock. Where have you been? That's uh, all anyone's been talking about. Um. Yeah, they got in a. Uh, in a fist fight after the first day of Salt Lake. Neither of them raced the next, neither of them has raced in America since then. Um, now USA Cycling has suspended both of them. Uh, classic, classic move to suspend them both, mostly in the off season. Maybe they can go do a uh, suspension training camp with Nairo or something, but you know, so, I think if you're if you're throwing hands, if there are punches thrown, got to get a suspension. It's just a little bit of a slap on the wrist. Claude, I was saying my theory here is that Boardman uh, rarely gets rarely gets the opportunity to be in the break, rarely gets let off the leash, and I think today is fully off the leash. And so maybe he wants it. He also probably knows that he is the biggest motor here in terms of just a diesel motor. I'm not saying he's necessarily going to win it or that he's the strongest or whatever, but I think he's kind of, he's used to doing those type of turns. He's just normally on the front of the field rather than the front of the breakaway. <laughs> Belize did not suspend him, Duncan, because he did uh, Commonwealth Games. 
him and Corey both did. So that's like suspension in America kind of didn't matter. Breakaway is still still working together pretty well. Corey is here, James. He's back in the field. Um, he's been kind of like top five, top ten in the field. He looked like he wanted to get across. There he is. Speak of the devil. He w wanted to get across to this. Looks like he's going across with somebody from Texas Roadhouse. Looks like the rest of the field is really... There's Fury in red in the middle there. Solid red jersey, black shorts. <laughs> Rissan Bahadi says, this is absolutely foolish. They both have riders in the break. I think this is a uh, pride, maybe. I could see Texas Roadhouse maybe wanting to get someone else up there, because they only have one. But Legion's already got two. I guess Corey getting up there would make it... Uh, that would make it Legion 3 and Best Buddies 3. So there's some value to that, but yeah, it still seems a little foolhardy. I don't think they're going to get there. They're just not going fast enough. I mean, maybe if Legion has radios and they can tell uh, Boardman to stop pulling, the cohesion comes out of that front group, maybe they get there. Not sure who that other uh, rider, Texas Roadhouse rider is. Huh. Yeah, it looks like maybe Blazers doesn't want anybody to get there. They're putting the hammer down. Let's see if Boardman keeps pulling while he's got Corey in the gap. Yeah, this is a full circus, out of control. Roadhouse rider going to keep pulling? He definitely... Roadhouse doesn't have radios. He doesn't know. No way he knows that he's got somebody trying to bridge across, so he's just going to keep ripping. Unless they got a DS. I doubt they even have a DS on the side, but he's going to have to be reading that uh, whiteboard really quickly. A little bit of a split in the field, or in the uh, breakaway there. Looks like guys are trying to not take pulls in there. So that's called taking taking people off the back when uh, someone, you're trying to let them slot in in front of you. They'll go behind and you just let that gap go and let that gap go and then they have to go around you and up. You do that when people are refusing to take pulls. It looks like someone was uh, trying to take an individual or group of people off the back for a second there. Best Buddies, uh, I would say Best Buddies team time trial, but I think Boyden is doing like double length pulls versus the uh, Best Buddies guys. They're looking around a little now. Things are changing. <laughs> Boardman is driving it. Boardman is driving it with Corey in the gap. Complete pandemonium. Out of control. I don't see anyone on Legion with the radio, though. I'm not seeing the uh, the little wire. Yeah, I think Williams Williams has been trying to just sit on the back. So I think Best Buddies is getting in front of Williams because he'll let them in in front and then just sitting up. I think splitting the split had to happen. Yep. Uh-oh. That's a... Uh, very innocuous split, like no one attacked, but that group is split. That that Roadhouse rider doesn't want to let it go. He's the only one. This is like one of the only big moves they've been in this season. This may be like the big move of the season if we want to talk about breakaways. So you can't be only Texas Roadhouse rider with the chance of like your team's only big result in an ACC race and just... uh sit up and let it go on principle because you're trying to take Tyler Williams off the back. Although, if this does keep going the way it's going, Williams will probably win the sprint. Really what needs to happen here 
Best Buddies needs to realize they got the numerical advantage and start attacking this group. Like, they got three, so they need to start going one attacks, they come back, one attacks, they come back. Just set up a batting order and start hitting it. Because they can't take Williams to the line, Tyler Williams. I'm not sure any of those Best Buddies riders can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Or even if they can, they shouldn't. Williams is one of the best sprinters in the country for sure. And you just don't want to go reduce much sprint with him. Especially not... Boardman is still here. Boardman's a one-man lead-out lead out train. <laughs> uh, this guy dropped, maybe? No, he's getting back on. Just a weird camera shot. He took his pull and he was pulling back on. Weirdly zoomed in camera there. Made me think maybe he got dropped from the break. I'm hearing 30 seconds is the gap right now. 30 seconds is a pretty solid. I don't think this is going to come back. I still, I don't see who would have the motivation to pull it back. I don't think they're going to lap the field. This is a pretty short lap, but it's probably a lap here is probably what a minute, minute and a half. So if they're only 30 seconds up, there was a uh, a group lap the field at um at Athens. Seems like that new Athens course they've been using. It's like the lap the field capital of the American crit scene. It's the steep. It's the uphill on one side, and then the steep downhill into corner three. Just makes it makes it a course that favors a smaller group, for sure. Jeff Williams is doing what he should do. He uh, He's taken some tiny, tiny turns, but he's taking the least turns of anybody. He's third wheel right now. I bet he'll come through, but he's not going to take a Boardman pull where he gets down here and just grinds it. He's not going to do that. Yeah, there he is. He's taking his pulls. He's Oh, here we go. This is what I was just saying should happen. Best buddy's got to do it. They got to start attacking. Boardman's covering. You got to make Boardman bring it back himself. He's looking around for help. Boardman and Williams looking for help. He's got to commit to this. Not sure which best buddies rider this is, but he has launched. Got to commit to this because the point of this is not getting away. The point of this is wearing down Boardman. And William, they're forcing Williams to pull. That's Williams on the front. We were just saying, someone was just saying Williams has to take his pulls if he wants to go from this group. Now what they do is uh, that best buddies rider who's third wheel there, that's Curtis White. When they make contact here, White has to just attack this. White is in the pain cave. Look at him. Yeah, White. White's going. Perfect. Perfect tactics. White's all in. He's going to shred it. Jeff, that wasn't really a call. That was a... Uh, that's just like tactics 101. You got the most guys in the move. And there's a sprinter you don't want to take to the line. You just got to start hitting them. Especially when you got... Uh, when you got Curtis White, he's a cyclocross racer. He's a pitchy guy. We got a course with tight turns. Big accelerations. This is how you uh this is how you break them. This is how you break Legion. Wow, who is that fourth guy? Somebody figure out who the dude with uh black kit, white helmet. I don't recognize him, but he's putting down a huge ride. Ooh, Martinez going across. Clever's coming across. That's gonna make it. One's all the way around. One Legion, one Echelon, one Best Buddies, one Blazers, one guy that I don't know who he is. This might go. If these guys keep ripping, this could go. Curtis White's committed. Nope. They're flicking elbows. 
they want each other to come through. I think I'm hearing this guy's name is Gomez, this guy. Pretty decent gap. Yeah, that uh, that rider from Texas Roadhouse isn't going to let it go easy, but we'll see if he's got the firepower to bring this back himself. Lance, that's the thing about being a a really explosive rider like Martinez. That's how I have to ride. I'm not that I'm as explosive as him, but I'm more of a um, explosive power guy than a time trial power guy, and. When a gap is 10 seconds or so, I can shoot across that pretty easy. But if I get hung out to dry and I get in the middle of a gap that's like a minute or something, I'm done. Yeah, Clever being up in this front move, actually, you would think like, oh, clever strong, that'll be good for the front, for that front little split. It's actually bad because all the other guys in that front split are going to look at Clever and say... That's one of the fastest guys. I don't want to sprint him. I got to make him work, and then it's going to start mixing up. Yeah, 100%, Lance. I can uh, I can do a big acceleration very quickly, but I am not a diesel. Okay, this is Tipsman from St. Louis, Missouri. 13th in Intelligentsia. Nice, nice. Um, back together. Looks like it's back together. $500 preem on the line, though. So we got a preem. This is 12 laps to go. We're getting lap cards now. $500 preem now. We'll see if anybody sprints for this. But then we got another points preem coming at 7 to go. And then maybe a gambler preem, too. Tanner Ward. Tanner Ward from Best Buddies wants $500. So does someone counter from this preem attack? This would be the ultimate move for best buddies is Tanner gets the preem, group comes back together, second they come back together, another best buddies rider hits it. Best buddies is killing it though. They got it together. <laughs> Not everything is easy, Lance. Try being a 150, uh, 130. 135 pound rider in one of these races where it's flat, like a Legion course, a flat four corner race where it's like 28, 29, 30 miles per hour the whole time. It really sucks to be under 150 in that scenario. I would give a uh, half a watt per kilo to put some raw watts on in that specific situation. <laughs> Yeah, but what's your FTP, Lance? Some of those guys, dude, from Florida, like everybody who's good from Florida is huge. And if I go down there and race, like the flat flat races, big crosswind, those guys just rip me to shreds. But when they come do like Tour of North Georgia, they're out the back on the uh, climbs that are actually just like, Bigger than a bigger than an overpass, so they don't know what to do with it. Back together. Best buddy's gotta hit it again. Best buddy's gotta start hitting it over and over and over. Every time, just snap. Curtis White sitting second wheel there. Looks like Boardman is trying to not he's nope, that's not Boardman. That's uh the guy from St. Louis. He pulled out of the middle. He's trying to go to the back and skip a pull. You can tell these guys are getting ragged. We're getting to the, the bitter end here. Everybody's looking back. White's looking back. Brown's looking back. Curtis White needs to just hit it. Like, before Johnny Brown pulls off, Curtis needs to attack. Because he's got two riders from his own team behind him that aren't going to follow. Maybe that echelon rider follows, but... Brown's not going to follow. He's been on the front for a solid minute. Here we go. They're doing it. They're doing it. They don't need me to tell them. Tanner Ward. Going. Going. Well, 
Let's see. Boardman is going into tractor mode. He's when he engages the tractor beam. <laughs> but the thing is, they got three on one here. I don't think Boardman can just bring all of them back, especially when it's constant accelerations like this. Boardman does well with a consistent high pace. So they need to keep doing these little moves, making Boardman chase it back. Just keep hitting him, keep hitting him. They're doing it right if they can just increase the frequency with which they're throwing these attacks. Woo! -hoo. They're going to start seeing the back. You might get your wish, Lance. They're, uh, they're about to start seeing the back of the field on the long straightaway. I don't think they're going to get there in nine laps unless the field really sits up and they really start ripping. That could be extremely messy, though, if they started catching the field, like, in the very end. Crazy race. Honestly, I'm, I'm loving having a different dynamic. Things are getting wild. While, woo, Williams. Williams is uh, take, going to the front and keeping it fast. They might get there, Austin. You might get your wish. It was you that wanted to see him get there, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it does seem like Boardman was just doing what he always does, which is be in the first 10 wheels, taking really hard pulls. And at some point, he looked around and he was like, oh, this is a breakaway now. The field is back there. Because the field, the split happened more than 10 back. Interesting. Echelon with an attack. I guess Echelon doesn't want to take Williams to the line either. Williams or Clever, really. I keep talking about Williams, but nobody wants to take Clever to the line. Yeah, is that Hugo Scala Jr.? Fingerless gloves just pulled off right there. Johnny Brown back to the front. So Johnny is going to have to be the, uh, the boardman of Blazers. He's going to have to do the tractor beam... Ill tractor work for clever. They might get there, boys. They might do it. Yeah. Curtis White snapping. Snapping. Curtis White can put a Curtis White can do eight eight hard laps. This is exactly the length of a cyclocross race. They're ringing the bell for the preem. They're about to after this one. They will get the uh, seven to go points preem. No, okay, maybe it is this one where they're getting the points. I think only really Martinez cares about, should care about these points. But it looks like maybe, yeah, I would think Clever would maybe pop around him here. I don't know. Uh, you know, best buddies might be after points too, though. If if I'm correct about they want to uh, win the team overall. Tyler Williams. It's like he heard us talking about him. He heard us saying, someone in the chat said, Williams needs to take pulls if he wants to win from this group. And it was like he said, okay, I guess I will. Here we go. Yeah, I was watching, uh, you'll see, so, hey, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed, please do. I'm painfully close to 3,000 subscribers, but I have got a race breakdown where I raced with Lockwood a couple of weeks ago, and I did a, a couple of really good, really hard laps on Lockwood's wheel, thinking he might uh, take me to the promised land, but I was watching for a brake check. He's, uh infamous for the mid-race brake check. Looks like there's a... Uh, is that J.P. Prim? Yeah, I don't... The Nashville local rider. Are you getting lapped, man? I don't know what's going on with him. Pull the plug. Ooh, all right. It should be getting froggy here. I don't think anyone's going to want to take it. Well, I don't think anyone except for 
Legion and Blazers is going to want to take it to the sprint. Interesting that it's Williams on the front here, though. I would think this would be the point that he starts relying in Boardman, relying on Boardman to take him to the line. Maybe Boardman is done, though. Totally possible. Best Buddies is uh, three. Wow. They're getting real close to the field, y'all. Six to go. I said with nine to go, I didn't think they would get there, but they might get there. Um, They're getting closer than I thought they would. Are we going to have to pull the whole field? Are they going to get... This is going to be the messiest sprint if they get to the back of the field and then, like, the win of the race is sprinting through the field. They're actually sprinting at the back. You're right, Lance. You called it. There's Corey at the back. There's Saley at the back. It looks like they're doing the thing where you try to hang just on the back and create a bridge. Just let that elastic go back and, and reach out and grab your man from the breakaway. I'm not sure if that's what he wants, though, Jeff. I'm not sure why that would... Uh, I mean, it would be fun for us to watch, for sure. I hope he does it. But I don't know if that would benefit him at all. I would think that he would want Williams to have a good, clean sprint. This is totally nuts. Five to go. We're about to make contact. All right, so now can we follow? They're making... There's Crane. Ethan Crane... He just looked back and gave him a, come on. Someone could attack. Okay. So now the break has lapped the field. They're going to be sprinting. So the back of this field is sprinting for the win. They got four laps to maybe find the front. Oh, man. Corey's going to bring him to the front. Could be. Not, not normally what Corey does, but... Yeah, Tanner Ward just, uh, that was a seppuku pull to connect those. He just put the sword in, fell on it. This is totally nuts. What's up, Luke? This is an absolute nuts race. Honestly, a good way to close the season. Been a lot of same, samey, same races all season. I love a crazy one. Okay, Best Buddies is on the front. So who, oh God, can't tell who's who, who was in, all right, I can see Clever, Clever's moving up, Clever is on the wheel right there in the middle of the screen, GoPro on his head, Clever is halfway up the field, I think that's Travieso leading him to the front, this could be a win for Clever just because he's got the best uh, team leading him to the front, I'm not seeing Boardman. Not seeing Boardman, not seeing Williams. Huh, probably Matt. He's probably going to go for it. Is anyone seeing... Uh, God, we're, we're just zooming in on faces, hoping we can pick something out here. Um, I'm looking for... Oh, Williams is up there. Williams is up there. Both Corey and Tyler. It looks like Tyler is on Corey's wheel. So this is going to be, I'm going to say it's going to come down to uh, Clever Martinez v. Tyler Williams. Those appear to be the best-placed guys from the breakaway who made it into the group, moved all the way to the front. I think Clever and Tyler, there's Tyler, middle of the screen there, on the left. I believe that's him right there. Three laps to go. Fury, series leader, moving up. He's going to try to finish as high as he can. Clever just flicked uh, Movendata really hard. I think I saw the that alt line of an F word. Yeah, the cam camera guys are doing the Lord's work now. I appreciate the, the zoom ins on the faces. Tyler is on... Tyler is on Corey, and Clever... Okay, Clever was on... Clever's freelancing. He's up there. 
it looked like uh, someone from Blazers led Corey to the front. I think it was Travieso. Looked like he led him up there and then pulled the plug. I think Saley is a couple wheels behind Travieso. All right, let's see it. Clever one, Tyler two, Hugo three. Austin to Dallas is calling it. I think Corey's going to try to do a lead out. He's uh he's second wheel right now. Not sure who this is pulling for Legion, but that's William's third wheel there. Looks like uh, Best Buddies is up there. They're battling. It's not going to be... Is that Curtis White? Is Curtis White on the outside right there? Right there? Oh, it would be so sick if Curtis White won this. He's got a pop. That's him. White glasses. Fourth wheel right here. Going into the top of the final lap. Curtis White's got a huge pop. He's a cyclocross racer. He loves an hour-long race. Massive VO2 engine. He's fourth wheel. Clever's on his wheel. Here we go. Corey doesn't want to be this far up. He doesn't want to be, but he is. It's going to be a race for the last corner. Someone said it earlier, but the last corner is going to be it. He can only pick up maybe one, one spot from there. Corey, all in. Who's got it? I think I think Will uh White was third wheel. Williams Curtis White. Gomez? Gomez? Gomez. Gomez Fury. No, not Fury. Who's that from Butcher Box? Is that Oliver Flout? Wow. Alright, I need them to like show me a rundown of who actually because there were uh, there were lap riders. There like that Texas Roadhouse rider that we never saw again is like in the top ten because he was in the group that lapped up. So, what is happening? Best buddies can't believe it. Okay, that is uh, fist bumping uh, fist bumping Martinez. There, that was that was white. I thought it was Curtis White up there. Why didn't I sprint with him? No sprint workout on the cards today. He... Yeah, me too, Austin to Dallas. That was awesome. That was a good watch. Oh, man. All right, I'm trying to see if I can get a rundown of the uh, final results here. Let's see if we get them on the screen. Because even having watched it, yeah, Tyler, Jeff, they did a good job. All the other teams did a really good job of making Tyler work toward the end of that race. That point where someone said Tyler has to start taking pulls, he did, and he had to do a lot. Yep, Legion, uh, they didn't just hand it to Best Buddies. Best Buddies. Best Buddies did the work all night. They had three guys up there. All right, later, Luke. Good to see you, man. Let's see if they give us some uh, final results there. Really cool to see one where we got through the whole thing without any major race stopping crashes. All right, I'm going to stop spinning. I'm uh, Fast Life. See, this was a weird one because the breakaway was so big. They don't pull the field when the breakaway laps the field. You get pulled if you're lapped because you're off the back. But the breakaway, the smaller group getting up to the main group, it's just part of the racing. It's like that in track racing, too. So you do get pulled if you're dropped from the main group. Yeah, really good to see one with no, no big crashes. I think we're going to maybe get an interview here. If they... There's an interview. I'll uh, pop that audio on. What I want to see is a rundown of the places because I have no idea how the rest of the top 10 shook out there. I mean, 
all the guys in that breakaway who lapped up are going to be in the top 10, but I have no idea how they stacked up to each other because they were spread out throughout that field. Yeah, no problem, Jeff. I have fun watching these things. And uh, today I got a little bit of, of junk miles in while I was doing it. Going to go out and try to do a century with the team, the road team tomorrow. Coming back from a week off, I'm just trying to get some big volume in my legs uh, while I'm still pretty far out from cyclocross season. And then as cyclocross gets closer, my workouts will get shorter and harder. Um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Again, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Here we go. Let's, let's hear him. Nope. That's them not having audio, not me. Yeah, this is on their end. This is not my audio for Fluffle. I'm not hearing it either. For sure, Matt. Hopefully I'll have some good ones. I didn't film any of my cross last year. Um, maybe I'll do the helmet cam this year. I've got a helmet and I've got a chest now. Yeah, no, we're not getting anything. <laughs> Pete, you don't want people to hit the like button? A little bit, uh, I mean, I would prefer the subscribe button. They're trying to be able to figure out. There's a little bit difference with Brian Gomez speaking and Dave Toll speaking, as Dave Toll has a booming voice, and <laughs> Gomez, Gomez is a little bit quiet, you know? Yeah, so that's I kind thought of interesting Gomez also, was Usana, I mean, I'm um, sure you've Curtis seen White this. in the end, they had on the same glasses, Personalities and that's what I was off using the bike. to identify Curtis, but... Yeah, 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 yeah I remember when I, sorry to cut you no, off, but no. I was going to say, I remember when I first yeah, met no problem, Gomez, it was at the Gateway Cup a few years ago, maybe a little more than that, maybe four years ago now, and I didn't know who he was, and here I am fighting for a position, thinking I'm being a bad guy, and then here comes this kid, just kind of wiggled his way through, and all of a sudden he's in front of me, and he ended up winning the stage. Trying to hang on here to see they're going to give the us a rundown come. of those top Brian three Gomez. positions. I want to see oh, wow. I looked at how those shook and out if I can. Impressive move. So have not gotten what you yet. see here in the interview is a soft-spoken guy, but he is not soft-spoken with sure his legs in the race. He's actually a really good racer, really aggressive. Even with the timing chance when you have a group that's exactly the main group, is that you got to do some post-production to make sure you got all the places correct. Athletes, but when they're in the race, it is. They turn it on and they're able to turn it off. It's completely different. And then, you know, you might have guys that are in the race, they're screaming stuff, and yelling you're gonna at you. are going to have guys like, the who whole took, time. Uh, they're, they're known as screamers in the race. You got guys. You're and then when they're off the bike, they're not like that as yeah, much, you know? Yeah. So it goes both ways, you know? It does. It goes both ways. I always tried to keep my energy and the way I wanted to race that was a in crazy the race. race. And after the race, with the course being we could talk about it, be friends. But I really tried to separate my friendships when I was racing. And so I can be all in. And I think that's very important. So you see a lot of guys that have that personality. Because nothing is too many if everybody works easy. together and everybody apart. had good you know, you're, you're racing around going 30 plus there. miles an hour separated um, by inches but normally and anything the could the happen gets, you know so uh, the greater the very, mathematical very chance there are one or two guys two that just say just go all in as a bike for whatever racer, reason my They're leader is behind to be a nice guy afterwards you talked about that kind of family atmosphere that you saw with best buddies you know these teammates friends getting along whatever it is I think, I think we see that at least in the Los Angeles because when you have somebody who just doesn't pull everyone else looks at that and says well, How important pulling, is that pulling, and, and, and being able to be successful like in a back race back compared quick. to maybe, you know, a team that has like a composite team and they put some guys yeah, together? Uh, what's the difference us, between, oh, you know, being, uh, uh, being able to be able to be successful here. with that family I did a atmosphere video compared a couple to that? Of days ago yeah, I mean, if you listen to anything that Justin preaches about Legion of Los Angeles, um, Jay he's Vines not the first team to the put Vuelta together uh, winning that stage a team won. of, of, of won again close today. people, and I think pretty crazy. that is awesome proven to, watch, to be but, uh, the yeah, recipe, I mean, it along that a guy with, of course, so being you know a good about athlete, Vine, but that's proven to be Swift the Academy, recipe, you know, to have a good team. Uh, he preaches that, he so you see the same thing with Best Buddies, you see the same thing with Miami Blazers, but it makes a lot of sense that a guy who can win a pushing the most watts competition if you don't, you're not willing to sacrifice for your teammate, you know, you're not willing to go can win above these, and beyond uh, super for your teammates as you saw tonight super with Best Buddies. Well they went finishes. well beyond the call of yeah, duty no problem, to make Rudy. sure Thanks for being they here. won the race tonight. So, yeah, it means everything. Yeah, and so... Ah, good call. Thank you, Robin. I never know what's going on with the audio. But I was saying that... Uh, I was talking about Jay Vine. Uh, Jay Vine won Swift Academy two years ago. Then he won uh, Swift Esports Worlds in 2022. 
And then he's won two stages of the Vuelta. I put up a video about his power, just using Strava sauce to go see what he was doing on those big climbs uh, a couple of days ago. But he won stage six of the Vuelta. Then he won the stage today, stage eight of the Vuelta. But it makes a lot of sense that a guy who can win esports e cycling, which is, you know, basically a watts per kilo competition, is doing very well in the Vuelta races that uh, finish with some extremely steep, extremely sharp climbs. Um, all right. Well, anybody who's watching this after the fact, go search for these results. They'll be on AmericanCritCup.com, I'm sure. I'm going to go get my stuff together because I'm going to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning tomorrow to go do a century with the Skyway Domestique guys. Uh, I'm going to plan. There's one more of these ACC races. I'm going to plan to be here doing this. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. And, uh, yeah, see you guys next